Well, we should be out fishing, but we got some work to do. We need to redo these poly lines. We need to hard pipe all this. The old man hates driving over this. He won't mow for me because this the problem with the poly lines is when the hot weather and cold weather comes, it pulls and constricts. And it'll bow this manifold way. It'll look like a banana. Real bad. Cause it to leak in the cold mornings. The union fittings are fine, but any torque or any tension on them is bad. So as long as they sit in nice, they're fine. But other than that, they will pee on you. There's what the old man complains about right there. Those things. So let's solve this problem. And if we're not fishing, we should be out there golfing. It's cold this morning. Here's what happens on a cold morning to these manifolds. You can see it bowing like a banana. As the poly lines constrict, they pull. And you can see how it's pulling the valves. These ones are pulling it to the right. These ones are pulling to the left. And it creates that bow. When it bows, they'll leak at each union fitting. Each T is on a three-quarter poly, a three-quarter T by hose thread, then a drip adapter to half-inch drip hose. Then it goes down the run with half-inch drip hose. Makes it real easy to zone and follow your water usage. We gotta undo each of these, disconnect it, save the T. Some can be reused. Looks like we got some friends right here too. What do we got here? Bunch of buddies. Look at all my buddies. One foot toothless leaves your ditch ready to install. It's literally a ready to install finish. Well, we pulled our manifold here into the shop. I have a different use for these manifold swivel tees. We're going to replace them with a PVC tee. It's about a buck, buck fifty a piece. It won't be too bad of a manifold. But I need two or three banks of two or three valves at a different location. That's what those are for. Pre-assemble as many of your fittings as you can. So we'll go out and drop them right in. Find a spacer size you like and lay out your spacing on your pipe. Knock them out with the sawzall. Assemble it nice and tight. Go around with the glue till the numbers fade. Well, here's our manifold. Pretty much dead on with the other one. There's the desired effect. Four zones this way. Important to get your pipe spacing nice. Never, never pack them in there. I hate that. Pull off with a T to the poly and then we'll tie back into the other poly and head down the run. And there's what we're looking like. Finish up in the morning. Well, I got everything plumbed in real nice. 
The terminal is an elbow, heads down the run. Nice spacing, no crossing, no twisting. Comes into our valve bank, pump drill nice. I end the manifold on a cap, so you could add more if you wanted to. You can tell what it's doing. Extra valve in the center. The extra valve in the center can either run out and then elbow to the right, or out, elbow to the left, and not cross any pipes. So that's the purpose of that thing. Take a look at the performance. Hits the first T and sends water down. Does a pretty good job of keeping it right in the container. It's mostly accurate. Pretty efficient though. Very simple. Very efficient. Cost effective. It took me about eight hours to rock all this out. It is indeed a golfing day. Pull eight, forward tees. So let's see what I did. The service period been blooming a long time. Unusually long. Each intersection got a couple shovels of soil by hand. Do this first so you don't blow your pipe spacing apart when you dump soil in your ditch. All the way down. And then we'll start backfilling. So let's backfill. Here goes the neighborhood noisemaker. Usually releases the glider right about now. Plus it pay for the full ride. Takes you up another couple hundred feet. And there it have released. Glider is on his own. Get a close up of the grooming. Pretty smooth. We got water running, and there is no shortage of predator damage. The coyotes and coons and possums come through at night and play heck on everything. Sometimes coyotes will come through in the summertime and they'll eat the entire row off. They chew them right in half and suck the water out like a straw. Pain in the ass. Well, we got a little bit of a flow test going on here. We got ten of them. Each one does about a paper plate size spray pattern. We're going to throw them in the five gallon bucket and see what the water usage is per ten sprinklers. One minute. And after one minute, we got less than a half a bucket. So let's pour that into a big measuring cup and see what we got. The Spectrum 360, this one's adjusted for a 15 gallon container. This is a 15 gallon container, inch and a quarter dogwood tree. Does a pretty darn nice job keeping the water in the container. You can really throttle them down too. You can turn them just down to a trickle all the way off so you can shut it off if you were not watering here or way open you can really open these things up way too much so it's spraying outside the container throttle down to about a coffee mug to a paper plate size seems to be ideal for a container it keeps it right in
a three minute watering seems to do a really good job. Here we are in the next size smaller container. This is a seven or a ten, one inch dogwood. But throttle down it does a really nice job. All the way down to about a five gallon or a three gallon. You can use these for a very small one. Problem with small stuff is they knock over. See looking down the row, they fire up and do their thing just fine. Here's a row of Globosa. Even without an exposed trunk, they still do fine down there. You can shove them down in there, let the canopy block the water and drip right down into the container. There's nothing wrong using them for dense shrubs like this either. This is a 25 gallon container, two inch caliper tree, and it does a pretty darn good job for a 25 gallon as a single. It keeps the majority of the water in the container. I hardly lose any, just minor bits splashing out. So as a single for a 25, it's approved. Here we have a 35 gallon Blue Atlas Cedar with a 3 to 4 inch trunk. Pretty nice big one here. We got a single Spectrum 360 doing the whole thing just fine. It's quite happy with just one. 35 gallon container. Here's a 25 gallon with a 2 inch maple. This was kind of an experiment. This is utilizing two Spectrum 360's throttled way down. And either two of them throttle down or one of them kind of on a standard seems to be just fine. Wasn't really a fan of how the two of them turned out. I really like just the single covering the majority of the root ball. So two of them wasn't the best idea, but that was just more of an experiment. Well, we got a real basic valve box, just enough to keep the mice and the frogs happy. Two by six, sitting on blocks, fabric underneath, always use fabric. I plumb it at the depth I'm using, which is four to six inches. This is sandy loam soil, so I'll never have a problem with mud bulging out, but if you have clay, you're going to have to do something different. Clay will just turn to mud and blow right out when you drive the tractor over it. But this sandy loam soil is a blessing. The little Hunter battery controller, these are great. They take six AA batteries. You can use a controller per bank. I got four more of these banks to do. But I'm replacing it. I'm running it all the way up to the ICC. So it's going to run all the way across the field, all the way down to here. This short run of poly is not supposed to be buried. So it's subject to being crushed and collapsed from traffic and gophers and mice will eat right through it and you'll have a water leak fast. If this section of poly is getting crushed and eaten, what you can do is use a piece of PVC, slide it on down, and that'll prevent it from being eaten. The gophers won't chew through the PVC, but they'll chew through the poly really easy. This will also help it from getting crushed from traffic. I really like the simple nature of this design. It self drains, it's real efficient, it's cost effective. You could plumb hard PVC, elbow up, elbow over, but elbows are always subject to being broken when they get ran over by the traffic. 